All right, here we go. What's up, be lad? David Evans Solar, man. You know, good to be here. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you letting me on this platform, bro. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate it. Welcome to Vlad TV. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Good to be here and good to finally see you because I'm used to just, you know, watching the videos here in your voice. Now I know what you're doing. This is what I look like. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Well, good seeing you. I appreciate it, bro. You know what I mean? But, uh, it's good to be here. Appreciate it. Well, you know, you've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I've been doing it for a while, man. About about 10 years, exactly. You know, just grinding as an independent artist and trying to come up with material and just trying to get myself, you know, recognized by the music industry and, you know, get people to, to hear my music. So it's been about 10 years, you know, a good 10 years just grinding. You know what I'm saying? Independent. And this is our first interview, so I want to start in the very beginning. All right, shoot, man. You know what I'm saying? Whatever questions you got, you know what I'm saying? I'm here to answer them. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's that's the whole purpose of me putting together, you know, this interview so I can get on your platform to let my fans and the people that support me know more about me and understand where I came from and where I'm going with the music and where I'm trying to go with the music. So whatever questions you got, shoot, I'm here to answer them. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole point, you know? Let's get it going. I tell you, you know, there's... So tell me where you grew up. Okay, well, uh, I grew up out of Indiana, you know what I'm saying, uh, out the 317, the home of Mike Gaps, Vivica Fox, you know, uh, Babyface, a lot of musical talent, acting talent that's in the city that goes unnoticed. But yeah, I come from a talented city, man, you know what I'm saying? A good city where, you know, you can make it and survive out the Midwest, Indiana. But I came up in Cali a little bit as a kid, too, you know what I'm saying? So I'm kind of like West Coast, Midwest, you know, raised. So I got a good understanding of on both sides, you know what I'm saying? Right. Okay, and the family structure, uh, siblings? Uh, yeah, it, it's just uh, growing up, it was just me, my mama, and my two sisters, you know what I'm saying? Uh, in the household, you know, it was my father at, at, at some point, but you know, he ended up going to prison for some stuff that him and my mama went through that ended up turning him into a negative situation. So it was just me, my mama, and my two older sisters, you know what I'm saying? Me being the youngest, you know what I'm saying, the baby boy, you know, I did a lot of things, you know, but, you know, as being the youngest, you know what I'm saying, and the boy child, so just me, my mama. Okay, and did you, you and your dad maintain a close relationship? I would say, you know, we cool. I wouldn't say close. I would say me and my dad is cool, you know. If I see him on the streets or he needs someone, you know, I probably would look out for him, but, yeah, we cool, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't got no hard feelings, you know. All the stuff he went through when I was growing up, you know, was, was, was his story, you know what I'm saying? And, and I just respect the fact that, you know, he gave me life. I mean, my mama brought me into this world. So, you know, hard feelings, it's all love. You know what I'm saying? I, I was like, yeah. There we go. Uh, okay. So, I mean, basically, you know, my dad ended up going to prison when I was young. So, it was like, you know, we got to bond, but we didn't get to bond. So, it was more or less just me and my mama that was bonding and my sisters. And that's kind of how I took it. And, you know, I had other family in the city that I hung around at, on my dad's side and my mom. Would you say that the family was struggling or were you guys doing okay? I'm going to have to say we were struggling, you know what I'm saying? Because uh, my mom, you know, she was a single parent by herself trying to raise up, you know, three kids on her own and living off government assistance and going through all the things that, you know, most black women go through trying to raise their kids. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to say we were struggling, man, you know what I'm saying? Basically, for the most part, it was a struggle coming up, you know, just being in that situation with my mom and my sisters and trying to help them out, trying to be the man of the house, basically. You know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, just any other black family in America that's going through, you know, a single parenting situation, they, they can understand what I'm saying. They can feel what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? And that's just basically it. You know, we're the typical black family in America in, in, in modern times, you know, growing up with just, you know, a mother and no father in the household. You know what I mean? So that was it. I became the man. You're growing up, and I mean, well, uh, like I said, I became the man of the house growing up because my dad was gone. You know, he wasn't uh, you know, available at the time to to be a father, so I had to kind of take it upon myself to become the man of the house. And you know, as a result of me being like 10 years old, you know, a youngster, you know, around that time, uh, yeah, I ended up. Well, you had mentioned one of your interviews that your dad uh, was doing some jail time. Was that younger or when you were older? I mean, like I said, I was about 10 years old, you know, when he left, you know what I'm saying? So I was young. I was still a kid, you know what I'm saying? I was just, you know, just getting into the world, just understanding what it means to be 
a young black male in America. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't have my father there. So, you know, naturally I took to the people in the neighborhood, the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like like the gang members, you know, the, the street people, the pimps, the hustlers, you know, I was those was my father figure. Rap artists, you know what I'm saying? Everything that was popping at that time, you know, it came and influenced on me to grow into becoming a man. And I left. I made a lot of mistakes, man. I did a whole lot of, you know, just this bad pain, man, growing up, you know. I'm not really proud of that. You know, I wouldn't promote any young person to, to have to go through because it was it was some hard times, man, just, just just struggling, you know, trying to grow up and figure out how to be a man. You know, I made all the mistakes you could think of. That's why my comments were Wow. Wow. I mean, for real, you know what I'm saying? I made every mistake you could think of in the streets, you know what I'm saying? As far as boys' schools, you went out, centers, foster homes. I've been through all that, you know what I'm saying? Uh, not not having your parents really guide you, you know? I didn't even make it to high school, you know what I'm saying? I was so bad, you know what I'm saying? I ended up uh, getting uh, into adult trouble at 15 years old and, you know, kind of tarnished my record. So it kind of limited me from being somebody that was, you know, successful in the future. I had to kind of take a, a different route, which is probably why I'm rapping now. You know what I'm saying? Because the rappers became like the people I looked up. Okay. So what was that like being that young? I mean, you know, being 10 years old, not having a father figure, you know, joining the streets, getting in, you know, gangs, getting into hustling, you know, uh, seeing pimps, you know, how they get down and all that. It was bad. You know what I'm saying? Because I was lost. I didn't know which way to go, you know. And as a young black male, like most young black males, I did a lot of things. Yeah. By this point, not having your father around, uh, and I mean, uh, you know, like I said, if you lack a father figure, you lack parental guidance, you're gonna make a lot of mistakes. You're gonna do a lot of things because you really don't know how to become a man. You really don't know what being a man is. You know what I'm saying? When you grow up and, and you don't have a father around you, or you know, a mother to really guide you and tell you what's the right stuff and what's not the right stuff. You know what I'm saying? So. Were you getting involved in the streets? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know, growing up, I was in the streets mainly, you know, hustling and, you know, stealing cars and just doing everything you could think of that, that was criminal and bad for a kid. You know what I mean? Stuff I wasn't even supposed to be doing. I was doing it because I didn't have nobody really to, to snatch me up and say, well, no, this is how a man is supposed to do it. It's how you're supposed to be. You know what I mean? So I became a product of my body. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I literally became a product of my environment. You know what I'm saying? And I was on my own, so I had to grow up fast. You know what I'm saying? I ended up, you know, in boys' school, reformatories, foster homes, all that. You know, uh, and just kept getting in trouble. And it took me a while to really come to the realization that, you know, it was wrong to live this life and to do the things that I was doing. And that's why I'm trying to relate to people now through my music. And I've been there. I've done it. In a world where, where mumble rap is kind of running things, I feel like you're actually lyrical and you take a lot of time with your with your verses. Yeah, 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 I do. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you know, uh, it's about the message with the music for me. You know what I'm saying? I grew up listening to Nas, Tupac, you know, Biggie Smalls, all the, you know, the Toys Biggie, Jay-Z, all the great rappers that had lyrics, you know what I'm saying? In the nineties, I grew up on them, you know, and I paid homage to some of the eighties rappers too, you know, like Public Enemy, Big Daddy Kane, KRS One, you know, Too Short. All these rappers kind of influenced my style to be what it is today. You know what I'm saying? And uh, for everybody out there, uh, make sure y'all check out that, uh, you know, uh, Hater in Your Blood, David Anatola. It's available on all platforms. Check it out. Buy a copy, support a brother. You know what I'm saying? Help me get this independent thing where I need to be. But yeah, I grew up on all the real rappers, man. So my narration and my commentary is, is, is deep. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to give you some real rap music and not just something you can dance to or, you know, or, or, or hit the club to. I'm going to give you something you can ride to and you can think about. You know what I mean? So y'all check out the uh, album. And uh, I really appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Glad, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. Appreciate it, bro.